Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel, and we have another golf ball review for you today. We are continuing along the Titleist line today with the Titleist Tour Speed. Let's dive in. All right, so the last golf ball I reviewed from Titleist was the Titleist Tour Soft, and I'll be honest, it was pretty disappointing. I expect a lot from Titleist. They claim to be the number one golf ball in the world. They also command about 85% of the market share, which means that out of every 100 golf balls that are purchased, 85 of them are Titleist, and I think that's a little high. I think that's one of the reasons I have my channel and have this information, is to hopefully get that number down. Not that I'm a Titleist hater. I just think that there's uh, better golf balls for better value, but anyway, that's beside the point. However... We might have a different golf ball today. This is the Titleist Tour Speed, so maybe this one will have a little bit better numbers. Um, I've also done a review on a couple years ago on the True Feel, and it was pretty good. So Titleist can be kind of hit and miss with average swing golfers, but maybe this one will be a little bit better. Let's uh, go ahead and dive in to see what kind of you know the uh, uh, the marketing statistics are here. And unfortunately, this comes in at a price point of forty-two dollars a dozen, uh, which it is a three-piece urethane ball. Um, it's not you know it, probably as high quality as the Pro. V1 or Pro V1X, but it is a, a still three-piece urethane golf ball from Titleist. It's more of your tour value, um, which they actually claim on their website is for people who want, you know, a, a tour-level ball at a budget-friendly price. Well, I got news for you, Titleist. $42 is not a budget-friendly price. Um, I would call, you know, more like the Vice at 37 or the Cut DC at 29 That's more budget-friendly in my book, but I guess for a Titleist ball, it technically is budget-friendly because their two-piece golf ball was 37 a dozen. So I guess if you're comparing it to that, maybe, but overall, um, you know, you know, I mean, it's Titleist, you know about it, I don't really have to get into it, so let's just get into the design of the golf ball first, let's see how they did, Titleist's logo is always cool, I mean, Titleist has a great logo, it's so, you know, you see it, it's iconic, you know, I mean, they don't have to change anything there, so I wouldn't expect them to. This one over here on the side, uh, the Tour Speed, I like what they did compared to the 2020 model. Um, they actually went ahead and you know made it a little bit better with the alignment tool. They kind of made it look a little more modern, more sharp edges. Um, I like it. It looks really good. The arrows are pretty cool. It's easy to line your ball up. So, I mean, overall, that's a good design. And then it's just got that Titleist feel to it. Um, it doesn't feel as premium as a Pro V1 does. Pro V1 has a nice thick layer of urethane around it. This one, not so much. It does feel a little thinner. I think that's probably because it's cast, but... Uh, it could be. It could be a number of reasons. And it's also made at the ball plant. You'll have to forgive me if I confuse them. I know. I think Pro V1's made it two, and then this one's made it three. Titleist has had some issues with the other plant. The one the Pro V1s are made, they have zero. They have high standards. But the, the other ones that like the Tour Soft and the Tour Speed go into, those actually, I think, struggle with quality a little bit. So that, that could play a factor too. But overall, not a bad design. Let's get out to the chipping and putting green. Let's see how we did out there. All right, so one thing about this golf ball compared to the Tour Soft I reviewed not that long ago is that this one does actually have some checkup. Uh, probably because it is a urethane golf ball and also it's a three-piece. Those two things seem to usually help that. <laughs> but it definitely has some checkup. It's a good, healthy amount there. Uh, not too much, not too little. It's really right in the middle. It feels really good. It actually feels pretty soft off the wedge. I got to say it feels really good there. Um, I was able to get the ball to kind of do what I wanted it to do. I couldn't get it to go left or right, so it's not got so much spin that it's controlled. You know, you're not going to be able to get it to jolt left or jolt right uh, or anything like that, but that's not always a bad thing. You know, that's really an advanced golfer type of level. And then, of course, off the putter, let's be honest, this is Titleist, so they always have an amazing feel off the putter. It feels really good, really soft, really buttery, and there's really a ton of forgiveness there. Even if you hit it off the inside heel, or let's say maybe you hit it off the top part of the putter, the bottom part of the putter, you just don't get that perfect strike. Uh, it is actually going to go pretty much the same distance. So Titleist always does really well around the greens. Uh, the main problem with the Tour Soft I reviewed is it just didn't spin that much. You know, $37, a two-piece golf ball, didn't really spin at all. I was kind of disappointed. This one, though, being 42, I expected to spin it better spin, and it did. So that's really all I could ask for. So overall, around the green, not bad. Let's just see if the numbers hold up. Okay, so getting into the golf ball, I will say it does feel a little better than the Tour Soft did, um, but that's about it. Uh, it's still got a weird feel. Titleist has this feel with their golf balls I just really don't care for, and if you do, that's cool. I don't mind. I mean, if you like the Titleist feel, that's cool. I'm just not a fan. It, it feels almost a little dead to me. This one, because it is speed, does feel like it comes off a little faster. The, the Tour Soft was almost so dead that like I could almost watch it go into the net. It just felt like it was so slow. It was almost like slow motion. This one is better than that, which is good, but it's definitely not uh, the fastest I've seen. I mean, I just got done testing the Dia Wings golf ball, and that thing, I mean, flashed before my eyes. 
this one's not as, as good as that. It just doesn't jump off the club that well. So overall, it's an okay feel. It's not great. I, I'm not a big fan of how Titleist makes their golf balls feel, to be honest with you, but some people have been using them for so long, that's what they're accustomed to. Okay, so let's dive into the numbers. Hopefully we can do a little better than the Tour Soft, especially with an average swing speed, 92, 93 mile an hour with the driver. Let's see, with the nine iron, we got um, 91 mile an hour ball speed. That's uh, just slightly below average. That's not too bad at all. 125.7, that's basically along with average. 119, average, and 18.5. Oh, so it launched really, really low. Uh, really low for a nine iron. The Tour Soft was 19.8, and that was pretty low compared to my average. My average is 22.5. Um, so 18.9 is really, really low. So you know what? That's actually a really good number then because I would imagine it's probably spinning really good. It's coming out low. It's coming out hot. Uh, my averages with my distances are still good, um, but I'm not really, I'm not losing any distance, but it's a lower launch. So actually that's pretty good. I would say that's a, a really good number from, from Titleist there. I like that. Uh, getting into the seven iron, the spin is 5,733, and that is very, very low. That's very low. Um, that's the kind of stuff that would almost make me worry I wouldn't hit a green and be able to stick it. Anytime I get under 5,800, 5,900, I mean, it will stop on a green, but if you hit the center of the green, it might end up at the back. It's just not as much stopping power as like a 62, 6,500 RPM, somewhere in there. So overall, not bad. Getting into the rest of the numbers, 104.6. Boy, that is just really bad. Bad. Uh, that's really slow. I mean, the Titleist Tour Soft was 109. It was phenomenal. Um, but this one just was not compressing at all. 159.6 on the distance. So that's interesting. I actually, the distance was not that bad. <laughs> Uh, and then the carry was 147.2, which again was not that bad. And there it is again, a really low launch. So I, I guess it's, you know, the total, the distance numbers must be because it's launching really low. It doesn't have a lot of spin to it. It's probably rolling after the carry. Uh, so that's probably what has a lot to do with it. But the ball speed itself is really, really low, which for a, a ball called the title of speed, uh, seems a little counterproductive, but hey, the numbers ended up okay. So, I mean, really the only bad number is the spin and the ball speed. So, not not bad. It could be it could be better, could be worse, but that's that's not bad. We'll go into the 5 hybrid now, 3923, just slightly below average. 117.4, that's slightly above average. 194.8, that's above average. That's a great number. 180, great number. And then again, a really really low launch, 13.7. Um, really low launch. So this golf ball is launching low consistently. Um, I had kind of an issue, the same thing with the, um, I believe, let me check, yeah. The Titleist Tour Soft also did launch really low uh, compared to my averages, but this one almost takes it a step further and is like, no, I'm, I hold my beer, watch this. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, I, I can I can stand it sometimes, especially if I'm getting the spin, uh, but it doesn't appear this golf ball has a ton of spin. It's more like a medium. So it, it, having that low launch, I mean, maybe on a really windy day it would help, but otherwise I don't, I don't like that. I, I, when you swing mid and you swing slow, you want to get the ball up in the air a little bit. You want it to carry a little bit further. So um, maybe on a windy day, but so far, eh, I don't know. Getting into the driver, the big stick, 2,890 spin. That is slightly above my average. 240.9, slightly below my average. 132.2, below my average. 119, below my average. And a very, that's interesting. Now we have a high launch at 15.1, which is actually, is, it's, it's actually mid. Uh, it's only slightly above average. So that's kind of disappointing. And unfortunately, sometimes this happens. Uh, my longtime subscribers will know. Uh, you get a golf ball that performs good on the nine iron and then really good with the seven and then bad with the hybrid and then eh, with the dry and it's just all over the place and it's it's really inconsistent and it makes it hard to recommend the golf ball because it's hard to go out to the course and remember like is this the one I compressed my seven iron with really well I, no no this one was the nine iron. it makes it tough and, and this one's kind of that uh, nine iron was average you know seven iron was eh you know, hybrid was good and then driver was eh. And so it's like, it's all up and down. And for a golf ball called the Tour Speed, I'm just not getting a lot of ball speed with it. I almost wonder if it's for faster swingers than 92 mile an hour. But that would, I would have to challenge that also and make me wonder because it, it responded so well with the hybrid, but not the driver. You know, and it responded well with the nine iron, but not the seven. So I, I almost wonder if there's a little bit of inconsistency there. Also, I will say that 
it doesn't have a lot of forgiveness. It's not bad. I've definitely tested worse, but it's not great forgiveness either. If you hit it off the toe, it feels really bad. Uh, it lets you know that you miss hit it just like the Torsoff did. Not to the level or degree it did, but it's still there. And that might be why I ultimately lost a little bit of ball speed is, is because the forgiveness just wasn't up to par. So could have a lot to do with it as well. Getting into the durability, um, looking at it, as you can see, I, I'm just not super impressed. I mean, this is a Titleist. I mean, I just tested a, a Diawings golf ball, for example, and uh, it, it, I mean, it, it was a, a two-piece beginner golf ball, and it by far tested way better than this. The Bridgestone tested way better than this. If you feel this, you can feel lots of scrapes in there, lots of cuts. Um, you can even like look at, I'm, I'll try to get a picture of that, but you can see the shavings coming off the top. Um, it's just really gone through the ringer and I didn't really have that many shots with it. It was only maybe like 45, 50. And for Titleist, again, I, I hold Titleist to a really high standard because they're the number one golf ball because 85% market share. Like I, I have to hold them to a high standard. And unfortunately that's, that's really bad. I would say maybe a three out of five for durability. Yeah. I mean, maybe even two and a half. It's not great. Uh, overall, I mean, I'll keep it simple and short. There's no recommendation here. Uh, $42 a dozen is one of the most expensive, you know, tour value balls you can get. Um, I just recently reviewed the tour stripe. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the, the tour response stripe from TaylorMade and it's the same price by far kicks this ball's butt. Uh, now keep in mind that is with the 92 mile an hour swing speed. We're all different. We all swing different. I'm just giving you the numbers here and the numbers are, are not good here and they're good with other golf balls. And I mean, you still have the vice, which is, you know, 37 a dozen. You still have, you know, I mean the cut DC at 29. There's a lot of golf balls out there that are a lesser price that are going to get you some really good performance. And uh, unfortunately I just can't see spending $42 a dozen on a golf ball that honestly I didn't like the feel wasn't super hot about how it was around the green and didn't like the numbers and or durability. So that pretty much narrows it down to almost everything. So guys, as always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning until next time.